So as you know, in recent weeks I have made a number of observations of the Earth's shadow passing across the line of geostationary satellites. And here is another one taken on the 22nd of September, which is the day of the equinox. And this is significant because this is the time when the satellites move through the widest part of the Earth's shadow, and therefore the period of darkness of the satellites will be at the maximum on this date. Here we can see the satellites disappear from right to left. And then more than an hour later, they reappear from right to left. There's a group of 10 satellites in this frame. What we're going to look at in this video is how we can determine the amount of time that the satellites will be in darkness and then compare the prediction to the actual observation on the day of the equinox. So just a quick recap. The geostationary satellites are in a very specific orbit directly above the Earth's equator and at a distance of more than 35,000 kilometers. You can see that line of geostationary satellites right here. Now for most of the year, these satellites are always in sunlight due to the tilt of the Earth. But around the time of the equinox, when the sun crosses the equator, the geometry allows the Earth's shadow to pass through this line of geostationary satellites. Because the Earth is a ball, the shadow is round. So as we approach the equinox, the satellites are moving through a progressively wider part of the Earth's shadow, and that means they will be eclipsed for a longer period. The maximum period will occur on the day of the equinox. After this date, the eclipse period will reduce until eventually it disappears altogether in a couple of weeks. And if we compare the amount of time that the satellites are eclipsed before, during and after the day of the equinox, we now have solid evidence that the Earth's shadow is in fact round. So the day after posting this video, I set up the telescope and tried to capture the satellites being eclipsed by the Earth's shadow. On the 5th of September, I was able to do that and the period of darkness was less than an hour. Now at the time, I saw a number of comments with people predicting how long the period of darkness should be on the day of the equinox. And here is one example. Hillel Finder predicted that on the day of the equinox, it should be one hour and nine minutes. Joe Cooksey made a similar prediction and Crow took that one step further and made a video showing how to calculate the period of time of the eclipse and also produced an Excel calculator, which we'll look at now. So Crow's video goes for less than four minutes and he explains the math used in his calculator. I'll place a link to this video in the description below. Here is the calculator. We input the sun's declination and that is the angle from the equator. If we start with nine degrees, we can see at that position there is no eclipse. The satellites are illuminated all night. At 8 degrees declination, we have an eclipse period of 27 minutes and 32 seconds. As that approaches zero, the period of eclipse increases. With the sun's declination at 1 degree, we have an eclipse period of 1 hour, 9 minutes and 5 seconds. And right on the day of the equinox, the declination is zero we have a period of 1 hour, 9 minutes and 32 seconds. So let's take a look at the actual observation and see how that compares. So we're going to focus on this satellite and the timestamp is in UTC, the 22nd of September 2020, the hour being 1552. And this is when the satellite first begins to fade as it enters the penumbra of the Earth's shadow. slowly fading out. By 1554, it has disappeared completely. The expected period of the eclipse is one hour, nine minutes and 32 seconds. So almost one hour and 10 minutes. So by 1704, that satellite should have fully reappeared.
you can see just approaching 1703 it is starting to reappear coming through the penumbra again and being fully illuminated by 1704. So the real observation made on the day of the equinox matches the prediction perfectly. So I'll play this time-lapse video now of the satellite eclipse on the day of the equinox and I'm sure our gleaming friends in the flat earth community will do their best to dismiss this video as CGI or find some other fault with that. So preempting their efforts what I also did was record this observation being made in real time. This is on the astronomy laptop using OBS I was recording each frame being taken by the SharpCap software from the telescope. And here you can see the slider that is indicating one frame is being taken every 12 seconds. These are the settings on the camera. And here you can see the clock on the computer which is set to UTC time. Now you'll see as the frames progress, this is the point in time where this satellite starts to disappear. one frame every 12 seconds. This shows you the software version, the camera being used, a ZWO ASI 183MC. It shows you how many frames have been taken over what period. And you can see now this satellite slowly disappearing with each frame. So I'll place a link to this video in the description below also. It goes for more than an hour, but it's just there for anyone wanting to analyze how this video was actually made. And there we can see the satellite has almost disappeared completely. And it's gone. I sometimes receive questions asking me to explain the equipment. So let's have a look at the setup I used for this observation. The mount is an equatorial mount. It is an Ioptron Smart EQ Pro Plus. The telescope is a refractor, a Skywatcher EvoStar 72ED. The camera on the back is the ZWO183MC. And we also have a guide scope on top. This is battery powered. It uses eight AA cells, four on each side, and it can be computer controlled through ASCOM. The entire cost of this setup as you see it is less than that of a Mavic Pro and a P900. So there is certainly no reason why some flat earthers could not be using similar equipment. Here is a quick peek of what goes on in the Perth Wolf Den. There is my telescope, currently looking up at the moon. The image is being fed into the laptop and via HDMI cable, I can see it on the television. And it is amazing just how sharp the detail is.
there's my work MacBook fed to a monitor so I can sit here doing my work emails while playing with the telescope.